You guys like how I made it green? Because it's Darkwing Blast, you know? It's green. You like, like it? What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, and today I'm excited because we're going to be talking about the set that's just going to be released in a couple of weeks here. Maybe by the time you guys are seeing this, like a week, a week and a half, something like that. But Darkwing Blast, I think, is one of the best sets to come out in a very long time. Now, we're talking core booster sets here. We're not talking side sets. And Power of the Elements was a great set, but I think Darkwing Blast trumps it. It's just such a great set overall. Now, we're going to get into the details why, but before we do, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. In today's video, we're doing a little discussion, but we do deck profiles, dual replays, combo videos, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed to tune in for more. And with that being said, I want to know what you guys think about this set in the comment section down below. Let me know. And with that, let's get right into the discussion video. Now, when people argue about what makes a great Yu-Gi-Oh set, they talk about a few things. One of the things being what decks or what cards are going to be very meta relevant. They talk about rarities and they talk about stuff that are coming in as imports from the OCG, not just stuff that is introduced in just this set. A lot of sets also recently have included Premier and TCG exclusive cards, so that could be a factor in as well. So why is Darkwing Blast, I think, one of the best set in years? It's because it factors in all of these things all at once. So I'm going to get into it just a little bit now, a little bit more in detail. Of course, here you guys can see we have Darkwing Blast. We have spoilers for a lot of our secret rares, super rares, ultra rares, our starlights here as well. So we'll go through all that stuff. But I want to talk about what makes this a great set once we go through all these cards and where the rarities are, what cards are included in the set, etc, etc. So first things first is we have three of the five Starlight Rares confirmed. These are fine. Starlights are something that's like separate from like regular sets. You know, every set is going to have Starlights from now on. So in that perspective, it's like, okay, these are just going to be the Starlights. People are not looking at a set just based on their Starlights, right? So we're going to ignore that. Let's go to the Secret Rares, all right? So for the Secret Rares, you have Spellbound, you have the Bistia Lubelion, and then you have Ignis Phoenix as well as a really good one, Rula Kalos, which is Lulu Karos in the OCG. This is the new TCG name. Sprite Sprint. We could see one, two, three, four, five five meta defining meta changing or meta relevant secret rares so that's 50 percent of the secret rares are going to be really really good and then you have the lady labyrinth which is going to be really nice for anyone who's trying to play labyrinth and then this world sea dragon is also a really really powerful card it's going to see a lot of niche application so if we're talking like six to seven of the secret rares are relevant that already just makes a good set because it's like hey if i'm pulling my secret rares i'm not going to look at my box and be like okay well this was actually a really bad box because i pulled bad secret rares right you can argue like this the goatee one Maybe you don't want to pull that. Muckcracker, I don't think is that what great of a secret rare either. But generally, you guys can see like there are some really good secret rares that you can pull. And not just talking monetarily, we're also talking about like just relevance in the game, right? Obviously, you can always argue like one card is going to be worth more than another card. Yes, that's always going to be true. However, like if you open an Ignis Phoenix to Draco Slayer, like Draco Slayer is going to be a very relevant deck in today's format. Not even just that, a lot of people want to play it, right? Whether it becomes a top tier meta competitive deck or not, it doesn't really matter because what ends up happening is people are going to want to play this people are going to want to play labyrinth labyrinth has been, been picking up a lot of steam recently especially with red reboot getting banned so for that reason it's like you can pull these two secret rares and still be happy about it right now obviously the tier limit the sprite sprint if you're playing meta decks these are the two best secret rares in the set you could argue spellbound is really good as well honestly i think the card's a little bit overhyped but overall it is a really good secret rare still and then they steal lobelion so just secret rares aside you guys can see here that this whole pool or six to seven of the eight of the secret rares are going to be relevant and good pulls if you talk about just the value it brings to the game not just money wise but just the value it brings to the game right so let's go down to the ultra rares the ultra rares we have the black wing which is really cool i think this is a new synchro monster we have one of the beast seals the alba loss and then we have the kashtiri kashtiri is that how they're going to pronounce it in the tcg i'm not sure but these two are huge all right the majesty pegasus the draco slayer is also an ultra rare and then you guys can also see you have some of the black wing support you have the valence support so overall like these ultra rares are all really good value like a lot of them really are right if you think about it these two are insane the fact that they're just ultra rares personally i thought these were going to get the secret rare treatment but these getting ultra rare treatment is insane so why is it insane okay and this all comes back to what makes a good set the value within the set booster boxes typically contain two secret rares four ultra rares and the rest of the cards are super rares in the packs correct now if you're getting four ultra rares right that means you have chances at the fenrir the unicorn which is really powerful the majesty pegasus which is a really good ultra rare the blackwing sudri as well as the blackwing the salt dragon which are two really good cards as well so you guys can see there's a lot of good ultra rares you guys can pull from this set and again when i say the word value i don't necessarily mean how much they're going to cost in terms of the monetary value i'm talking about value they have overall to the game right these two specifically 
basically have a lot of meta applications. Now, maybe they're not going to be meta off the bat because I know the Kshatri, again, if I'm saying the name wrong, I'm saying the name wrong, but the Kshatira, Kshatira, Kshatra, I know it was Kshatri Law in the OCG, Kshatira is, I guess, the way we're saying it, but I know these are getting supports in the next set as well. So for that reason, it's like, okay, I know they're not going to be meta out the gate, but these are going to be two really good ultra rares, two ultra rares that maybe even deserve to have secret rare slots. And the fact that you guys get four ultra rares per box makes these actually relatively easy, I guess you could say, to pull. Now, I don't want to say easy, but I do mean it in the sense of like, it's double the chances of a secret rare. And then you can also pull two from a box because there's four ultra rares and you're most likely not going to be getting two of the same one. So for that reason, it's like, all right, you pull both of these in a box and you're, you're super blessed, right? You know what I mean? So for that reason, the ultra rares in the set are really good, okay? Now, even the ninjutsu stuff and the valence stuff, maybe you don't want to play these decks, but there are going to be players wanting to play these decks. So keep that in mind, okay? I, I just want to say this because a lot of people, when they talk about sets or they talk about boxes, they think like, oh, I don't want to play valence, so this is a bad card. That's that's not necessarily true, right? Now, maybe value-wise, it's not going to be a $30 ultra rare. I don't expect it to be. Maybe it will be, who knows? But the thing is, it's like a card like this is a card that people are going to want. So whether you want to play the deck yourself, or even if you don't want to play the deck yourself, you can get rid of this card fairly easily because there are going to be people who are going to want to be playing these decks. I know for a fact the Blackwing stuff is going to be very popular because it's very relatively cheap. That brings me to my super rares because you guys can see all the good Blackwing, new Blackwing cards are all super rares here, right? Blackfather World, there it is. They're here too. So you guys can see that the Blackwing stuff is going to be something that's very popular within the set. A lot of people are going to be wanting to play the deck. And so for that reason, the fact that it's all super rares is really, really good for the set. Just the fact that, you know, it becomes not expensive. You're not going to be pulling Blackwing secret rares. If you want to play meta decks, you don't have to worry about pulling a secret rare that's a Blackwing card. And then you're kind of like, oh, I really didn't want this secret rare, right? Because the secret rares are the meta relevant stuff, right? And then you have the ultra rares, which you have a couple black wing ultra rares but again you have four ultra rares per box it's not that bad but majority of it in this in the super layer slot so when you think about a set in terms of its overall value to the game what i mean by that is you have to consider the meta relevancy but you also have to consider the people who don't want to play the meta just want to play different decks have just want to play very popular decks black wing is a very popular deck so these kind of prints in the super rare is going to be very very good for the set in the long term because people are going to want it people are going to know these are cheaper decks that they're going to want to play so for that reason even in like a year from now let's just say after this set's been released people are going to be looking for these super rares if they choose they want to play blackwing they'll be like hey these super rares aren't too expensive now on release they might be a 50 cent card dollar card but maybe in a year and a year and a half they might be a two three dollar card which is still really good because they're still considered budget you know a two three dollar card is not that bad they're still going to be considered budget however if you open a box or you open a case and you get a ton of these holding on to them is not the end of the world so that's really cool but the thing that i really want to get down to all right is the bestial super rares you have Druid Worm, you have Magnum Hut, you have Sarnir. The fact that you get three bestial cards, an engine slashed, I don't know if you want to call it a deck, but it's kind of like an engine that can be splashed into different decks. The fact that these are super rares is insane. Now, of course, if you want to play bestial at full power, you're going to want to play the Lubelion, which is over here, which is a secret rare. However, if you just want to play these as pseudo DD Crows in some kind of like dragon base deck or just any kind of deck in general that you just want to stack these into because you want an extra body on the board, you need an extender, then you guys can play these and they're just super rares. That is insane to me. The fact that they made three bestial cards super rare is insanely just amazing. Like honestly, it's just insane, right? And then you have the Dynamite, which is a really good Draco Slayer. And again, you have the Blackwing stuff here. You have Shangri-La, which is a super rare as well. So this is the Ixies for the Kashtri, Kashtri. I'm still saying that name wrong, but Kashtiri, Kashtira archetype. This is this being a super rare is just really, really powerful. Again, Blackfeather World one's nice. You have some branded support here. Godi cards are super rare. It's really nice because I think there's one ultra rare. Oh, there's two ultras for Godi. Okay, okay. So that's the thing. I think the spread is really cool. Of course, we have all the comments here as well so here's the thing that i want to get back to essentially and the whole reason i'm making this video is why is this set so great we went through the cards we went through the secret rares the super rares the ultra rares etc etc and why is this one of the best sets in years in my opinion and why i think it is is because it covers everything this may be the first set in a very long time power of the elements was also a really good set Pot, like that last set that we just had was a really powerful set but i think this one even trumps it because it just covers everything in every rarity the fact that we get meta relevant stuff in the super rare 
rare and the ultra rare slot not just the secret rare slot is insane the fact that the secret rare slots are mostly all just meta relevant stuff stuff that is going to hold value in the long term like maybe spellbound right now might be not the most popular card and people are going to be focusing on trying to get their tier limit rule kalos what's the name rule kalos or their sprite sprint so people might be focusing on getting these two but in like two to three months when all the sprite players and all the tier limit players have access to these cards you know that's when spellbound starts to go up a little bit in value right like that's a little market thing right so here's the thing with this set is you're getting everything everywhere if that makes sense you're getting good meta relevant stuff in the secret rare slots you're getting good meta relevant and just splashable stuff in the ultra rare slots the fact that fenrir i believe it's fenrir i can't remember if it's fenrir or unicorn that's like the pancratops i think it's fenrir though but anyways the fact that this is just an ultra rare is insane because a lot of different decks can splash it in there it's not just like a specific deck that's going to be wanting to play this this is a very splashable card same with the bestial stuff here that you're going to get the fact that these are just very splashable cards but they're just super rares so they're going to be very accessible, right? So overall, the reason I think the set is insane is because it provides us with everything I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Meta relevancy, casual relevancy, there's going to be cards that are going to be valuable in the long run, maybe not valuable now. So long term, it's going to be really, really powerful. Overall value for the game, again, maybe the Ignis Phoenix of Draco Slayer and the Majesty Pegasus, maybe these might not be the most expensive ultra rares or secret rares. However, they're very relevant cards, right? Like not just the fact that they're meta or tier one or tier zero. It's just the fact that people are going to be wanting to play the deck right so relevancy relevancy is a really really big thing in the set and the fact that it just covers a lot of different archetypes that is just going to be very sought after again black wings is the main thing in the set but then you have the beast seals you have the cash dira again bro i'm gonna get these names down eventually but you have this so ninjas you even have ninjas you have some valence support you have a little bit of everything sprinkled in there and they didn't do the thing where it's like oh you guys want to play valence eh, it's gonna be a secret rare and if you don't want to play valence then you might open a box and pull his valence secret rare and be like wait i don't want this this is neg so i think konami hit the nail on the head with this one the cards that they're printing in this set is insane it hits a little bit of everything like i said meta non-meta fun casual you know the, the the engines not even the decks just engine cards are going to be in here i think this is going to be one of the best decks and in the long run it's going to be one of the best sets going down in history because just the fact that it hits a little bit of everything it almost kind of reminds me of breakers of shadow bosch if anyone remembers bosch did everything Thing, right they had the cyber dragon infinity which was good for cyber dragon also pepe played that with the constellar um i forget ptolemaeus it was a ptolemaeus and then you had like solemn strike in there Bosch had a lot of really good cards. You had the Phoenix Rhino Warrior, Twin Twister. You had a little bit of everything in every single slot. This is kind of what it reminds me of. You have a little bit of everything in every single slot. Opening product might actually be worth it for this set. And that's the thing. If you ever look at a set and say, it might be worth to open this product. Like let's say I want to go to my locals. I want to open a pack. This might be the best pack to open because even if you just pull a super rare, like you're getting valuable super rares in here. Like even if you don't hit an ultra or a secret, it might still be worth it. I saw the pre-release prices on these and they're like $3.99, I think, and $4.99. I can't remember which one is which, but like they're like three or four bucks. So you can just hit a super rare in this set and make your money back on the pack, which is insane. So that's why I think this set is great. I think it's going to go down in history as one of the best sets. Specifically in recent years, this is probably the best set in my memory, just off the top of my head, just because it just covers everything. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm excited for Darkwing Blast. It comes out in a week and... Uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I went a little bit in depth about my thoughts, my opinions, my feelings on Darkwing Blast. I think this set is insane. It's one of the best sets I think of all time, really. When we look back at this in a few years, we're gonna look at Darkwing Blast and be like, wow, this set was insane. Maybe it wasn't meta defining like Power of the Elements was, but just overall what this set does for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in general, not just for the meta scene, but for the casual scene and just everything around surrounding Yu-Gi-Oh, right? I think this is such a great set let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below also if you guys did enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more new video content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko combo videos dual videos deck profiles all that good stuff as well as these kind of discussions here and there make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned in for all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko sign it out peace